Welcome clowns to my new arena strategy guide. This time we will take a look at my own strategy, strategy that I developed myself completely. And so far I'm basically the only player using it. It's trash into fast imp. So this is a strategy mainly for syphilosis. Uh, as you can see from the civilizations listed below, Mayans, Chinese, Berbers, Hans, uh, civilizations that don't really shine on, on arena. And especially if you would be facing some like help siege on Ager saves, we shouldn't really have much of a chance in imp and therefore we uh, are sometimes going for this strategy because it gives us some chance in the game and that's what we are looking for. Also I can see I have there listed Koreans. Uh, Koreans potentially my favorite civilization for using this strategy. I already uploaded to YouTube uh, one game where I was playing with Koreans against gods where I was going for this exact strategy. So I will give you a link in the description as well. So what is the difference between uh, normal trash and what the strategy that we are going for and also the difference between fast imp and our strategy. So uh, compared to trash, we don't need major damage. That's very important because if we are going for trash, we really want uh, opponent to react to it. We need him to drop a couple of defensive towers, maybe we want to kill some villagers. We are hoping to push him off resources, so we are hoping that his map isn't the greatest. Uh, this is all kind of luck based. We are hoping that he will do some mistakes. So trash is a great strategy and if we are going for trash we need a lot of damage uh, to make it with it. Not really with our strategy, because but, uh, we just want to secure the map control. That's the most important thi thing for us when we are going for our trash. Compared to fast aim, the difference is that we will already have a forward castle. And that's very, very crucial. If you are going just for fast aim, you will get to aim. You might have some a bit of army, but before you will get really the map control next to open and base before you will start using your siege. All that takes a lot of time. If opponent goes for a lot of castle age army, you might not even get the control. Uh, so that's not really happening in our case because we will already make a forward castle and then we will go imp. And therefore the moment we hit imp, we can already start putting a lot of pressure on our opponent with trebuchets. So let's take a look at the game that I have there for you prepared. It is a game Chinese versus Teutons uh, that I played recently against Project Belgium. You can see Chinese absolutely fall in this in that category when we are facing major sieve loss. We really don't have many options against or kind of no options against uh, Teuton siege, uh, especially siege on Angers and help. So therefore, we kind of need to win the game before him or at least before opponent gets to a siege on angels, otherwise in aim we should be losing the game. So first of all let's take a look at my scouting. I like to set my villager, uh, my villager, my scout almost as early as possible to scout open and base or at least see how far he is. So this is what I'm doing now. I've already decided that I will go for trash in this situation. Uh, our map isn't really important, we have great map there, but we won't be the one uh, defending, we need to be the one being aggressive. And as you can see, opponent has a very solid map. There is a stone that can be quite exposed, depends from which position I'm pushing, but he has very defensive main goal that's amazing, he has their great secondary goal, so his map is really good. And this is a situation where normal trash would have very little chances of success because of his map. But uh, the strategy that we are going for, it's, as I said, not really rely relying on open and having bad map, which is the advantage of it. So I'm already luring my deers. I uh, just want to make it before feudal age to uh, not focus on it. After all, also, we you can see we are not going necessarily uh, as fast, but obviously want to make, we want to put pressure on open and with the trash and therefore we are going way faster than we would be going normally on arena. Sending their four villages forward. I like to send four basically every single time. 
and we need to find a position where we want to push from. Opponent map is amazing against Trash because uh, there aren't really many open areas. What I mean by open areas? If you would be pushing, for example, from there, opponent has very easy time to revolving like this. Well, if we so we need to be pushing from areas that are so so tough for revol for him. Even there, that's not amazing because he can quite easily revol there. But simply his map is, is so so good for um, any trash aggression. Again, advantage of our strategy is we are not really relying on the damage that we will do. At least we forced opponent to make loom. That's also some investment for him. And yeah, we will get in. That's uh, what we care about. Behind this, we don't really care about the damage that we do with the trash, but we mainly we mainly care about our eco. So our eco setup has to be so so clean. We already have double lumber camp. Uh, as you can see, already have 400 food. Having the farm transition, we have double bed. We have horse color right away. Those are the f first things we do in feudal age. So our eco is very very clean. That's very important for us because we need as clean eco as possible. For this build to work there i'm going well I, I got in i will drop there for a tower i'm happy if open defense with a defensive tower of his own because that's some investment for him that means that he cannot just boom he has to send villages on stone and this is uh investment for him i know that i will lose this tower war he's opening the students he can even move there to villages uh, he can move there the scout to attack my tower so there's no way that I win this tower war and I will, I'm just happy about the damage that I made there with this tower and that I forced reaction of opponent. Obviously great to give the forward villages some usage so as we are not really ma building many towers it's also always nice to be pushing from areas which are close to the uh, to opponent resources so now I will those villages will now take stone and I will be completely happy about the situation. I'm now beginning wheelbarrow. I also like to make this upgrade in feudal age when we are thrashing. So once again, our ego should be should be very very clean after all this. We didn't make as much damage as you can see from this strategy. Uh, open and just kind of revolt there with using the blacksmith's market he just made one tower we forced loom but that's basically everything we did and he will have very very good boom behind this as well so we are not we didn't really do lots of damage counting as a trash that wouldn't be a successful trash for us but again our main position our main goal is to just take care of this map control because we need to drop off our castle and we are completely happy. If we are behind in uh, castle each time, if we have worse boom, but we will just drop a forward castle and be faster in, that's exactly the position that we wanted in the start of the game. Also, I think their opponent made a major mistake. Uh, you can see so far he played like very clean game and such, but didn't commit, uh, didn't overcommit to the defense against the trash, but. Uh, I think he should be pushing this one away because as you can see opponent is just focusing on getting some relics he's just focusing on the boom dropping the second DC immediately but if he doesn't push this one away he will get a forward castle in his face so you should be always if there is forward position uh, forward villagers next to your base and opponent will go castle edge behind this try to push it away Knights, mangonels, anything, but just don't uh, give opponent such a free position. This is kind of an Arabia mindset that you just focus on getting as much uh, as much eco lead uh, as possible, but it doesn't work on arena because arena is way more um, way, um, so much more about position, and therefore if opponent has a forward position next to your walls, it can be always tricky for you, especially if he can go faster to aim than you, and if he will make the traps faster therefore. Okay, we didn't really care about ego so far, so for now our egos are kind of similar with opponent. I mean, yes, he has second DC, now even third DC. Once again, I would much prefer to have at least now uh, the defensive siege workshop, but not really the case for opponent. Um, obviously he will boom away, since he's on more TCs than we are, 
and we already have wheelbarrow so for now our egos are somewhat similar i think i even collected more resources by this point because i was longer in feudal age but that's not really the most important thing Okay, open and getting their conversion. I added some spearmen because I was really worried. I saw that he has blacksmith's market, but I was worried about opening, getting a stable behind his tracks, stable, and just killing my, my forward position. So I already made it, I added racks. I would even add a stable if I would feel like there is a need for it. The moment we would lose this forward position, we would die in the game because there is kind of no other way that we would put a forward castle. And without the forward castle, we just lose this game. There is no way. So, what, what's happening now? First thing, Siege Workshop, I wanted to make sure that I won't uh, die to some mangonel, uh, mangonel defense or such. So, I wanted to make mangonel of my own. And now I'm just putting there the forward castle. And I'm very very happy about this position that we built there because I know that as I was way way longer in feudal age I should have way more resources than my opponent as you can see here and also I'm only staying on one TC so I'm investing basically everything to get as fast imp as possible and therefore we will be faster to imp and that's all we cared about we have a forward castle even like not in not outside of his walls but in his walls which is better than we what we expected and we will be faster to aim. So imagine we start with trap, put it here, and all this ego that open and developed here in the last 10 minutes will be kind of useless because we will, we will be trapping it uh, everywhere. We will be trapping everything of it. So this is why this is strong. Uh, this is one. This is strong strategy. We secure the forward position and we will be faster aim. And if you are forward castle with faster aim, you can just. And do so much damage with it even though if open and has way better civilization way better boom and such and such okay we are getting there some damage with the mangonel i'm very happy about it also i'm very happy to see that castle i was 100 percent sure that i'm faster to end than my opponent and you see I, I i see this castle i will also have resources for the second castle so the moment we reach imp we should have there two castles spamming traps to kill opponent uh open end castle and open it will be just so so uh, lighter to aim that uh, there is no way that he defends this castle or that he will produce uh, some good amount of trebuchets from it i'm now going for the chikonos so far i didn't even make fletching as you can see just noting the fletching i didn't want to i didn't want fletching to delay myself so uh, just now going for some army as i said before so far we didn't really do major damage without aggression but it's not really the most important thing most important thing that is is that we are in this position where we are have two forward castles and faster in there we are even forcing the tower obviously great for us because if opponent makes their defensive tower he cannot uh, it's less stone that he can use for repairing the castle even getting their villager so great great value from those uh, chukonos a any value that we can get from this army now is, is obviously great. Okay, second castle may be a bit later than uh, it, it could... Uh, at this point we likely should have the second castle up. Small mistake on our side, but we are still completely fine. As you can see, opponent is now 40% up and yeah, there are two, cast two castles spamming traps in his face. Nothing he can do about it and I think might sound weird but in my opinion even though opponent has now relics and even though that he has more eco as you can see it's almost 20 more villagers it doesn't matter and i think the game is absolutely over because opponent will always lose everything there and then we have chikonus and yeah he will he will have nothing uh one good thing that or one very nice thing that i liked about uh, what project belgium did against me is those two petards yeah uh he made two petards he sent them forward I i'm missing where the second petard is was uh, yeah I i'm i was 100 percent yeah there is the second petard so he made two petards which means that he can get in my base and he's smart and he knows that there is no defense in my base because he sees that everything i had i'm investing into this forward position so he's counting on doing some counter damage he knows that there is like no defensive tcs he knows that i'm on one tc so he's trying to counter attack with two petards maybe some knights 
and put the impression on my base. It shouldn't be crazy amount of damage because opponent basically has no resources for this. He will now lose all, all farm eco and the game still should be over. But this is a nice move by him, at least to try uh, to do something about the game. Okay, we are killing this castle. Opponent only managed to produce one trap. There we could be a bit more fortunate than killing this trap after all. If, he, if, he, if any of those shots landed, which would most likely happen, we would kill this trap. But he saved this trap and you will see that this is very important save for him. Because he won't get any other siege than trap and without traps he cannot kill my castles. So saving this trap is very crucial. Still, as you can see, opponent, opponent's ego completely in shambles. He's badly housed for now, cannot really produce army. Um, losing all the farm eco, losing all the relics, losing the gold eco, so game is absolutely over, you can see it from the score as well. And I think we can just speed up a bit because there really isn't much else to see from this game. Splitting there my army to just kill everything as fast as possible. Also killing the relics or like killing the monastery with the relics, so that's the only gold income that opponent has for now. He's trying to reboom outside. There are for the villagers, that's nice, that's similar amount. We already have similar amount of villagers, uh, but yeah. Still, nice counter attack, I like it, but and that's about it. The moment I will spot this one, uh, which is now, I should uh, make their defensive castle. I already had the resources for the defensive castle, I just wanted to be sure. I could even move the villagers all forward, send them here, or I could send their, send my army back because there are only a couple of knights without any upgrades, as you can see. So this push just couldn't do it for open end, but yeah, we uh, it was still it was still was a nice nice try, and I like it. Anyways, what is happening there? We are just using our traps. We are there a huge amount of chickenus army that opponent cannot do anything about, killing their everything and if we would decide we would just kill this push. It's uh, just what we want to do right now. As you can see in opponent's base there is basically nothing left. Some villages that I missed for now but that's about it and opponent. This is his eco, uh, 24 villages out of 45 being idle. So we are just waiting for the GG call. Yeah, I can repair this castle forever, obviously, so this will do really nothing. I could even send the, the villagers forward and fight this trap. I don't care if I lose their 10 villagers. It's the only trap that he can do. And yeah, we just uh, started to move our army back. I still had a couple of Chukonos forward, but everything I was producing, I was producing here just to get rid of this uh, annoying push. But as we said, the game was basically over the moment we are faster in by at least a solid minute. And we had the forward, two forward castles on opponent. In that situation, opponent cannot ever get to some good army. He was losing all the eco here, and then the game was absolutely over. We'll see it here at the timeline. 24 30. So, uh, yeah, if you'd like, um, we like to go like below 10 minutes. You can obviously go a bit later, but. We want to go like if we would be going for a normal scout rush, then we are going similar feudal age time. Uh, castle age, if we play it clean, depends how much we commit into it. If we are castle age behind this on 20 minutes or something like that, then it's still very solid. You can be even a bit faster, depends how much you are using your market, depends how much you commit, if you go for fletching or not, and such and such. Obviously, it depends on your civilization and imp time. Yeah, we just played it really clean, so we are below 25 minutes to aim, but again, really depends how much you have to commit in castle age to make your forward castle and such and such. So this was a very clean game for us because, and as I said, you can see opponent didn't make their major mistakes in the game. He had absolutely didn't overcommit to the to the defense in feudal age, which I liked. Uh, he had a great boom, he was playing very clean game, he was 26 minutes to aim after all, that's still really impressive time. But simply he didn't push this uh, this back and if he doesn't commit enough and if he doesn't push this aggression back then he will get a forward castle in his face, faster aim and there is, isn't much what you can do about it most of the time. So 
this is why this uh, strategy to build is quite strong and it's at least good to know about it and if you are using it then uh, sometimes it can win you, the, win you the games that's for sure so that's it for today uh, thanks guys for watching and i will see you very very soon with a new arena guide tutorial so see you